what you're looking at here is the HTC Resound from Verizon Wireless. It's one of the uh, new leading flagship phones coming from HTC, 4G enabled. One of the, some of its highlights are, um, which I would consider as highlights, is a beautiful screen, RGB matrix, no sub-pixel arrangement. So it's pretty much top tier screen quality, screen resolutions coming from a phone, 4.3 inch, having a uh, PPI that even exceeds the iPhone. Um, uh, this is uh, going to compete with the uh, Galaxy Nexus, so it's good to see some of the benchmarks that this phone actually has, so you can compare them to the Galaxy Nexus and look at some of the material differences between the two phones, performance-wise. <clears throat> um, let's go ahead and load up uh, Antu 2 so we can take a look at the benchmarks here. Okay, I've run this uh, benchmark several times now. Um, as you can see, the total score is 5,787. Um, you may want to take a look at you know the sub scores. Uh, some of the places where the Galaxy Nexus outperforms the uh, HTC Resound is RAM, which is important. Um, floating point, um, not sure how important that is. 3D graphic um, database I/O is definitely uh, performs better. SD card and SD read write um, speed is almost uh, 80 to 100 percent faster than the Galaxy Nexus. Um, based on that, I'm not sure what real world what that means in real world translation, but something to take note of. Uh, the Snapdragon dual core Snapdragon here, the S3, actually uh, outperforms the Galaxy Nexus in the CPU energy and the 3D graphics performance. So that's something to keep in mind. And also, the Galaxy Nexus runs at 1.2 gigahertz. It's a 4460 OMAP, so it's actually uh, rated to go from 1.2 gigahertz to 1.5 gigahertz. So it could be uh, up clocked and it could even perform even better, more, much more better than HTC rounds down. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, let's load up um, Nina Mark. <clears throat> run that. This uh, benchmark takes a little bit of time to complete. Let's turn this volume down. <clears throat> yeah, that's one of the downsides of, that I've noticed with this phone. The screen is, is uh, excellent, crisp, but one of the annoyances is the glare. Um, I'm inside of my home and you can still see a little bit of glare. When you're outside in the sunlight, it gets even more um, annoying to try to see the uh, actual screen. Um, it turns the brightness up, but it, it doesn't help as much. It also uh, gets a lot of smudges pretty easily and hard to get rid of. But as you see, Nina Mark 1 just completed, and it's 53.4 frames per second. It's a pretty decent score. Um, let's get out of here. I think the uh, Galaxy Nexus does about 47 on that test. Let's do Nina Mark version 2. Oh, I think I might accidentally hit home. Let's run this. Pretty decent frame rate. This is a more demanding benchmark, Nina Mark II. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, Galaxy Nexus does about 35 on this test, and this does about 43 to 47. But we shall see soon. So, yeah, okay, 35 for the HTC Resound. Can't quite remember, recall what the Galaxy Nexus gets on here. Sorry for a misstating. Browse results. <clears throat> Pretty intense website takes a while to load. Okay, so we're looking at the HTC Resound right there, highlighted in green. I'm gonna actually have to scroll down quite a bit just to see the Galaxy Nexus appear on here. Joy Bionic outperforms. Let's see, Galaxy and Samsung Galaxy Nexus.
Okay, there you go. Galaxy Nexus on the list right here. This is actually, let's see if we get this thing in focus. 23.92 is 1196 by 720 resolution. That's the actual resolution. So it's a little odd that you're actually seeing the Bionic appear higher on this list, the Nexus X, than the Galaxy Nexus um, or Droid Razor. So the uh, 3D graphics on the HTC Resound is, is, is pretty decent, which is a, it's a plus considering the 720p screen resolution. And also, you're not going to ever have a, see a reduction in the actual resolution that's reported here because there's no on-screen buttons that actually take away from the frame rate. I mean, take away from the actual screen real estate resolution. Probably should be more accurate with what I say. Okay, so let's get out of here. Just need a Mark II. And let's run... NeoCore is not really interesting at 59.1 seconds frames per second, which pretty much almost all phones I've seen, recent phones, are capping out around 60 frames per second. We'll run the Quadrant benchmark. Um, I'm actually recording this video from a Droid 3. And uh, my Droid 3 gets about 2,000 to 2,500 on this, depending on how, how much stuff I have running in the background. And it's pretty fast, um, pretty high score. Um, down gets about 2,200 on average on this benchmark. However, the HTC Resound is considerably much more snappier than the Joy 3. A lot more RAM, you know, everything just runs crystal smooth with this HTC Resound as compared to the Joy 3. But the scores do not reflect that difference in speed. So um, I'm beginning to. I'm a little more suspicious about the uh, effectiveness of this test right here. We do want to proceed so we can see the results, but here we have it. 2,327 is what the HTC Resound got on this. It's pretty good, but let's get out of here and um, check out Velamo. Um, this is a new benchmarking suite on the scene. It's actually provided by Qualcomm. So. I am under suspicion that they have skewed these results to, um, I guess, what I want to say, boost the numbers of the Qualcomm's Qualcomm processors compared to others. So this test is actually pretty interesting. It actually measures the frame rate while scrolling. This one is doing the HTML5 different tests. Um, this is effective trying to analyze browsing performance. It captures the screen rate while you're scrolling while browsing, which is something that most people find a very important UI measurement because you know scrolling around a screen that's lagging and jumping around is just not a very uh, rewarding experience or pleasurable experience <clears throat> a non-tech has recently done some tests using Velamo this benchmarking suite with several different phones and even on the uh, benchmarking uh, results that they posted uh, Qualcomm processor is uh, shining in the results which is a little interesting phone here. I'll try to test in case you guys like an extra look at it. <clears throat> um, another thing I've noticed from using the phone, many of the uh, review websites refer to this phone as bulky. Um, I don't know, I find that a, an overstatement. It's certainly thicker than the other phones, the competition, but uh, it doesn't feel bulky. It actually fits very comfortably in the hand. Um, it's skinnier, well, narrower than the actual age, uh, Droid Razor because of the actual uh, bulk that it has. It's not as thin and flat and long. Here you can see it's uh, capturing, measuring the frame rate of browsing and scrolling. 
which is pretty interesting. But yeah, it's it's actually feels it's very ergonomic phone. It feels good. It has a little bit of weight to it, so it feels kind of solid. Um, it's not annoyingly heavy like a Droid Three, but it's pretty well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the benchmark suite has completed. And Valamo sings 881 is your score. You can now compare your device's performance with other similar products. Let's send this information so we can get a comparison. All right, so this is the uh, comparison chart that Valamo uses. Xiaomi Mi 1 Plus, which is a Qualcomm processor. <coughs> Galaxy Tab, Asus Transformer, Motorola Zoom, and your score. Okay. As you can see, this even outscores the Galaxy 2, which is unusual. So, there you have it. Alamo, these are the benchmarking suites for the HTC Resound.